All right, so I'm here to show off uh, my remote for my TV. So you can see on the table there that I have three remotes, or two remotes and one PlayStation controller. But I've been controlling most everything with this guy, which is my TV remote running on my Raspberry Pi. And uh, so here you can see that I have up here on the top it says Smart TV. So this controls my TV. The other tabs, I have a Roku in the other room and these are all shortcuts to the apps I have installed. And I can do text input and all the normal inputs. For the PlayStation 3, <clears throat> for right now I have an on button and an off button just because of the way it's set up, but eventually it'll just be a toggle. Um, and then all the standard controls, but instead of X and square and triangle, I have them mapped to usually a more familiar input for, for standard uh, entertainment devices. So there's usually a go back button, a menu button, and etc. So. Uh, this is mostly for debug. You can see here, you can enter something for text input, so I'll have it say hello, and I don't know if you'll be able to hear it because my Raspberry Pi is in the other room. But the idea is that this is just here for debugging, but the idea is that if I have something else in the house going on, I can have it trigger <coughs> a voice command. And so this is a camera I have in the other room, and I can arm the camera by clicking the little lock button right here. And you might hear it say camera armed. It's going to move. It's going to move to position, and then it's going to arm the camera. And here I'll I'll, un, I'll disarm the camera, and it should say it immediately. I don't know if you could hear that or not. And you can go to set uh, different preset positions, so it has a little motor. It'll drive around. Um, SMS, similar to text. This is just here for de uh, debugging. Um, but you can have if I could type, you can enter a piece of text here, and this is for SMS. So here I have a, a message from Twilio that says, test. So um, you can send SMS, or here I have pushover, which is a push notification. So you can see my TV remote universal controller says, test. Um, and that's about it. So here I'll show you um, how to work the TV. So I'm going to try and focus on the TV since that's probably the more interesting part. And here I'll click the power on button. You hear the PlayStation 3 kicking on. And because it's hooked up as a CEC device, the TV will also turn on here in a second. And now the uh, stereo doesn't have any internet connectivity, has no means to, to be controlled remotely, uh, aside from infrared, but it also supports CEC. So I've created a, a series of shortcuts. You can actually enable the stereo through a series of menu commands, but in order to ease that, what I've done is create this simple button right here that says, it's like a lock, so it tells me I'm going to link these together. So I'll click this one button, and it's going to execute those series of commands to turn on the stereo. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's pretty loud. So I'm going to turn that down. So that's turned down, and with the remote, I can drive around, do whatever I want. Um, I have some shortcuts here. This is to the browser. And so I can go to an address bar. So you can see it moving in the top there. So let's click here to change the address, and instead of clicking through with the mouse, uh, with the direction pad, I'm going to type in a URL here, JSLA, and I'll submit that. And then you can see, I don't know if you can read it in the top there, but it actually populated the, um, the address bar. So I have to navigate down to done. <clears throat> and it says the server's not found. But the commands were inputted. They seem to work. But for some reason... The, uh, oh, because I had a typo. That would do it. All right, let's try this again. All right, so I've gone to the JSLA web page just from using my phone through WebSockets on my Raspberry Pi. And then I can go back to my Smart Hub by clicking that button. And I can go... Let's go to HBO Go. I haven't watched a new episode of Game of Thrones yet, so 
I could go through here and watch this, but that probably wouldn't be a very interesting presentation. Um, yeah, so you can do all kinds of different text input, shortcuts, and all the standard commands. You can also change source here and go to TV broadcast. And I don't have cable, so it's probably not going to be very compelling, but I can change the stations up and down. And I don't want to hear about that, so I'm going to switch source, and we'll go over to the PlayStation 3. <clears throat> so now in the remote, I'll switch over to PS3. And for some reason, I accidentally hit a button, so I can click back. And I can do all the basic commands that I'd want. Um, you certainly could try and play games with this, but it, the latency, as you can see, it takes you know, a fifth of a second to go through. That's probably not going to be a very fun experience. Um, but uh, it, it works well for, for media. And so I have a button here to, to shortcut to turn the PlayStation off. So I can just turn the PlayStation off with one single button, um, which is a little bit convenient. Although I guess I could be inconvenient if I wasn't the one executing that command, but and that is the, the gist of the remote. Um, it has some other functionality. LG TV has some uh, simple support. Um, Panasonic TVs have support, and um, it also can check stocks and weather. And so you can program it to say, if my stocks fall outside of certain bounds, then I want it to verbally tell me or send me a push notification or an SMS to, to sell my shares. So I'm just going to update this while I'm already on my TV, I guess. Of course, I'm doing it all from my phone remote. And so that is the Universal Controller. You can find the source code on GitHub. Hope you've enjoyed it.